super conscious mind. That is the mind that the spirit uses within the fifth dimension. So the fifth dimension is, is space. So now we are no longer limited by time. And within the fifth dimension, we are no longer limited by space. That's why it's cosmic consciousness. You know, Christ consciousness. You know, Christ was always talking about, you know, loving your neighbor as yourself. Because, you know, space is, there is no separation of space. We are all connected. We are all one. Why wouldn't you love your neighbor as yourself? You know, as you do unto someone else, you're doing unto yourself. As you judge others, that is how the Lord will judge you. You know, because pretty much how you treat everything around you is how you are treating yourself because we are all connected. You know, if you look at this mind triangle, this is one of the things that I love about it the most, is all the way down, like the two sides. The triangle has two sides, right? Look at these two sides. All the way down here in the physical, look how far apart the two sides are. They, like, if you only looked at the, you know, if you put your hand above the screen, and covered up all the rest, you'd be like, oh, there's one side and there's another side, left side and a right side. These two sides are separate. You know, the further out into the physical you are, the further the illusion of separation. I feel like I'm separate from everyone here on this call. I feel like I'm separate from the, the lamp across the room. I feel like I'm separate from all the animals that are not inside my <laughs> dwelling right now. You know, but the deeper that I go, the closer that these two lines become until at the very top, you can see that they aren't actually two separate lines. They are connected. It's all one. So the deeper you go within yourself, the more you understand that we are all connected. There is no separation. The separation was an illusion the whole time. And the further out towards the physical you go, the greater that illusion becomes. So. That's, you know, the fifth dimension is all about space. There is no separation of space. You know, you, like every, every holy scripture that talks about, um, you know, God, it's, it's always like, uh, like, like in my, one of my favorites is uh, from the Bhagavad Gita. And when Krishna, Lord, Lord Krishna, who is, it's, in, in, it, for those who don't know, you can think of it kind of like Jesus Christ. Lord Krishna was like Jesus Christ. God incarnated it into a, a form of man. And the whole story about the Bhagavad Gita is Arjuna is this, this prince. Um, his dad it rules the kingdom. He's, he's the prince. He has other brothers. And they're going into battle with, their, with you know, their family, their cousins, their relatives, who want to then take over the kingdom. You know, these are all the unproductive parts of yourself that are wanting to take over you know, your, what, is determined, what determines what happens in your life, you know, your kingdom. And so then Arjuna, you know, it's, it's like, I don't know how many thousands of years ago that this was set, but, you know, the battle isn't like, you know, they don't have guns in the bushes. They're in a field with their chariots. Arjuna has a bow, <laughs> you know, and it turns out his charioteer, right before this battle, his charioteer is Lord Krishna, God incarnated into a man. And so the whole rest of the, of the poem, it's a poem, the whole rest of the book, of the Bhagavad Gita is just Arjuna asking questions to Krishna about life and things and him telling him, you know, like part of it is like, you know, Arjuna's like, I don't want to fight my family. You know, I'm very familiar with that. He's like, no, you must pick up your bow and fight. It's like, I don't want to, I don't want to fight with myself. I'm very familiar with these parts of my, you know, I, I know that me being lazy is not very productive, but I'm familiar with that. You know, I don't want to change and transform that part of myself. I don't want to go through the struggle and fight that it's going to take. I don't want to put forth the effort that it's going to take to transform that part of myself. I'm familiar with it. It's a part of me. It's who I am, you know. But Lord Krishna says, no, Arjuna, you must pick up your bow and fight. You know, no. If you want to progress, you must utilize the tools of your mind in order to transform these unproductive parts of yourself. Because if you don't, those unproductive parts of yourself will take over and they will determine, you know, the laziness will take over and it will determine what's produced for you. It would likely be nothing. <laughs> and so that's kind of what it talks about. But anyways, at the moment in time where Lord Krishna exposes his true self and form to uh, Arjuna, it's, it, it was, uh, I forget the exact wording, but it was like uh, the, the form of a thousand faces or something like that. Like, like, like every face that's ever existed is like in this face all at once. Because, you know, space, there is, there is no separation of space. Everyone is, is all connected. We are all connected 
and we are, and through that connection, we can kind of sense that we're all connected. You know, when you're having the same thought as someone else, when you can just think of someone and, and you know, something's going on with them. And so you reach out or, um, you know, that's through that connection that we have with other people, we are able to ha have those experiences, you know, or empathy in general, you know, being able to feel what someone else is feeling, you know, it's because you're connected and the, and the, the more you open yourself up to someone, the more you are able to understand and experience the fact that we are all connected. You know? So anyways, that's the fifth mention. <laughs> so the duty of the superconscious mind, so the duty and the purpose of the superconscious mind are, are the, you know, negative and positive, well, um, receptive and aggressive qualities of the superconscious mind. You know, this line, like I said earlier, this line here delineates the, the fact that the subconscious and conscious mind are two halves to a whole and the superconscious mind itself is to have, is whole amongst itself. So the, the duty of the superconscious, I'm, I'm gonna kind of dabble a little bit into dream interpretation here. The superconscious mind is where it's, it's your spirit, you know, it's like your, some people call it the conscience, you know, um, that that inner voice that's guiding you and, you know, kind of nudging you along to go this way, go that way, don't go this way, don't go that way, you know, follow through with this, you know, ooh, this is, this is what at my core I feel I'm called to do in this life, you know, that's coming from your super conscious mind. So, you know, it's your inner authority. So any authority figure in your life in a dream is going to represent the super conscious mind, you know, any parent, any grandparent, a boss, um, a pastor or something, you know, a teacher, you know, now these different things are going to help you to understand how you're perceiving the super conscious mind. You know, like if I'm getting this inner urge to do something, do I feel like it's bossing me and you know, like, oh man, I really have to do this. You know, do I feel like that inner part of myself is bossing me around? Then that's going to come through in the dream as a boss. You know, do I feel like it's trying to teach me something that it's going to come through as a teacher? You know, do I feel like this part of myself, it really does have my best interest and is, is nurturing me through life and it's going to come through as like a parent, you know? And so that's going to help you to understand that, but it's not like different aspects of our personality or anything like conscious and subconscious are. So I kind of want to put that out there, but the masculine and feminine have two different things that it's the, 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 it's, it's the, you know, the masculine is the duty and the feminine is the purpose. So the duty of the superconscious mind is to provide life force energy to the soul and physical body, to the rest of us. So, so like, um, you know, if you've ever had a thought, an idea of wanting to do something, you know, like, um, I don't know, like, like, and, and you all of a sudden you have this inspiration, you know, to like, oh, wow, yeah, I, this is what I need to be doing. Now you, now you have this inspiration, you know, in, inspiration, the core of that word is spires, spirare, which, you know, means uh, breath, you know, which is the source of energy, life force energy. So that inspiration that's coming to you is that life force energy coming from the superconscious mind, because what idea and thought that's attached to is a part of the blueprint for your life which is the purpose of the superconscious mind to hold the blueprint for your existence that you have created for yourself you know like when you're when you're building a, a house or any type of building there's a blueprint you know everybody looks at the blueprint now because of the blueprint the carpenters know what they need to do the plumbers need to know what they need to do the HVAC knows what they need to do and the electricians all know what they need to do so they go off and do it you know, so you've, you've come off and you've joined into this lifetime and you're running around. And then all of a sudden you're like, you know what? Oh, I forget what I was doing. <laughs> Man, what was I doing? I, I was doing something and then I kind of forgot what I was doing. Let me go back to the blueprint. You know, just like if an electrician's like, all right, we're feeding these lines along. And then it's like, wait, where were we going with these electric lines? Like, I know where we went with those other ones. We put those outlets right there and those light fixtures. But these other ones that we were going over this way, where were we sending those? Ah, let me go back to the blueprint and reference it to know exactly what I need to be doing. What's my purpose here? You know, what am I doing here? And so your blueprint is the same thing. Your superconscious mind holding that blueprint for you is the same way. It's, and, and that's why it's, you know, represented by the feminine. It's receptive. It's just sitting there holding the blueprint, 
waiting to receive your attention. You know, the foreman isn't just running around with the blueprint and taking it to the electrician. Hey, 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 you know you're doing this, right? Is that what you're doing? Oh, okay, great. And then run over to the carpenter. Hey, here's the blueprint. You know, no, they leave the blueprint in one spot so everybody knows where to go to find it at all times. You know, so it's receptive. So it's ready to receive your attention. So like, you know, your mother or a female boss or female teacher or, or female, um, you know, leader in your life somehow. Versus the male is the aggressive, pushing out the energy. You know, whenever you are in alignment with, you know, whenever you are in alignment with that thought contained within the blueprint, here's the energy that you need to do it and get it done. We'll give you that energy so that you have the energy to get through what you need to get through in order to do it, to get you up off your ass, to be able to change that lazy part of yourself or whatever, you know? And so the power of this, because of all of that, the power of the superconscious mind is transcendence, awareness. You know, if you look here, the, the superconscious mind is way up here. So you have a higher perspective, you know, when you're, when you're seeing things from your spirit, far beyond your body, you know, this physical life, this one this one, you know, for a lot of people, 80 years, maybe 100 to 200 years, you know, this one small space of time in this physical body beyond the soul that's had, you know, hundreds of lifetimes, tens to hundreds of lifetimes. Beyond that is your, is your spirit. That's the vehicle the consciousness is using in the fifth dimension. You know, it's much more aware. There's, and so you're able to transcend the things that normally are blocking you up, you know, like when you have the awareness that you're truly connected and the same as every other person out there, you're able to transcend those thoughts that make you want to be mean to this person, not forgive this person, you know, punch this person in the face, you know, to, to someone who has this higher level of awareness Punching someone else in the face is to them no different than, you know, punching yourself in the face like you're Jim Carrey, liar, liar. You know? So uh, transcendence and awareness is the power of the superconscious mind. Because when you're aligned with the superconscious mind, when you're thinking from the superconscious mind, when you're having those superconscious thoughts come through, it's a love, higher level of awareness. It's a higher level of perspective. You know, it's like if you're lost in a forest and in the woods and you just don't know where to go you know the canopies of the trees are so thick that you can't even see where the sun is to get east from west but if you climb those trees and get to the tallest tree and look out above the canopy it's all okay west is over there and we need to go southeast so we need to head this direction i have this higher vantage point this higher elevated vantage point now i'm aware of everything else i'm able to transcend the things that were in my way to keep me from having this level of awareness. And now I have more direction on where I need to go. So I can climb down this tree. Hey guys, we need to go this way. You know, so that's the power of the super conscious mind. So with all of that encompassed here, let's go back to here. When we dream at night, to bring it back to one of the very first things I said, when we dream at night, our consciousness you know, which uses the mind as a tool, uses these bodies as vehicles, our consciousness shifts from the physical body into the subconscious, into the astral body and uses the subconscious mind. So when we dream, we are more aware of the mental, mo emotional, and astral levels. We're closer to the superconscious, to that blueprint. It's, it's very easy to check, to check that one, you know? Like if I want to go uh, to Cincinnati from where I'm at, you know, if I want to go to the next city over, it's very easy to go to the next city over. If I want to go, you know, three or four cities over, ah, uh, that's a pretty big journey, you know. Like I, I got to plan that out, maybe catch a plane, you know, versus drive, just drive over. I can do that every single day if I wanted to, you know. So connecting with the superconscious is, is easier when we're in our dreams than when we're awake. You know, assessing what's going on mentally and emotionally for us is very easy. All you gotta do is turn your head and look around and see what's going on within your mind, you know, within, within your thoughts and within your emotions. And like I said, right in here, this is where everything's being manifested from. You know, your thoughts create your reality and that, and that is happening here. And so when you go to sleep and dream at night, 
you're able to look around and assess. That's why I love lucid dreaming so much because I can kind of see what I'm trying to manifest, where it's at. Is it in the mental level? Is it in the astral level? Is it in the emotional level? You know, how far along is it? Is it, is it moving? Is it changing? You know, but anyways, you're able to kind of really assess what's going on in the subconscious. What am I aware of? What am I unaware of? That's one big thing to look at in your dreams. You know, is, is, is it light out or is it dark out? You know, is it daytime or is it nighttime? You know, nighttime is going to be telling you things that you're unaware of. And that's where a lot of value comes in because you would have had no chance to, to be able to tell what it's talking about. You know, a lot of times when I'm interpreting dreams for people, they're like, uh, I don't really see that. And I'm like, okay, well, was it nighttime or daytime? Uh, it was nighttime. Oh, well, yeah, light represents awareness. So of course you aren't able to see it because you're, it's something you're unaware of. And that's part of the value of, of dreams is because subconscious mind knows what you're, what you know, it knows th lots of things that you don't know. And even if you didn't have a lifetime to build it, you know, there is no separation. So it can pull from knowledge and awareness of others around you. You know, plenty of times I've had, I've had a thought of something being created, like, man, this would be really cool. And then, you know, five, six months later, it, it's a thing that's invented somewhere, you know, like, um, what was it? Peanut butter or something like that. That was invented like in five different places. I don't think it was peanut butter. It was, it was something that was like, I, I forget what it was. I, I, I might as well not even talk about it then. But something that was invented at the same time within, within like five months of each other in five different places around the world. You know, it's like the hundred monkey theory. You know, you can go and look, look into that. You know, they taught monkeys how to open up a coconut or something like that a new way. You know, they were all doing it one certain way. And they went to this island in, in the Polynesian islands. They went to just one island, taught those monkeys a new way, a better way to open it, open up this coconut or whatever it was. We'll, I'll make it up, coconut. And one monkey started to open it up like that. And then other monkeys started opening it up like that. And by the once they got to 100 monkeys were opening it up like that, all of a sudden they noticed on all these other islands, all the other monkeys started opening it up like that, you know, because we are connected. And so we can access the knowledge within other people's minds, the same as we can our own, you know? And so through, through the subconscious mind, you're able to do that. And so that's also another value that dreams can provide. You might, you might not have the answer within your own soul, within your own subconscious mind, but you can still go within and find the answer, you know, because through that connection with everything else and everyone else, you know, another, uh, another human being might not have the answer, but mother earth, the spirit, the essence of Mother Earth might have the answer, you know, so you can connect with, with her and find the answer. So um, this first week, I really wanted to break down the uh, structure of the mind. I suggest that you, you know, watch this at least one other time um, sometime this week to better understand it and better grasp it. Because going forward from here, I'm going to just say things in, in, in an assumption that you know what I'm talking about. So when I say, you know, astral level or mental level or subconscious or superconscious or, you know, the duty of the subconscious mind is to manifest thoughts of the conscious mind, you know, things like that. I'm going to assume that you know what I'm talking about. I'm assuming that you understand that your soul is in the fourth dimension and your spirit is in the fifth dimension, you know. So um, I really wanted to come with this to better so that we can all have a better understanding of our mind, how our mind works, how our conscious mind and subconscious mind work together and, um, you know, the differences between the two so that we can better understand dreams because dreams occur within the subconscious mind and we assess them and, and you know, use that information with the conscious mind and the physical. So I hope that helps. Any, any questions before we complete for today? If throughout the week you do have any questions or anything, you know, feel free to reach out as always. Um, I always make myself available to anyone and everyone. All right, well, uh, I will leave it at that and we'll see you guys next week. Peace.